So why have we got an F1? Um, quite a repetitive theme. Is it selfish? I always wanted one. Um, and me and Carl were up at Phil at the install company. We were up there seeing him for something totally unrelated. And this was in the background. And someone, a friend of ours that we knew had bought it. And it was just sitting there and Phil was like, yeah, he's not doing anything with it. I'm sure if you offer him some money for it, he'd let it go. So on the way back from Phil's, which is about a three hour drive, me and Carl discussed it. I was like, yeah. So I shot the guy a message. By the time we got back, a deal was done. And we became the owners of sort of a semi-built F1. So it's a 1950 shell rebodied onto parts of a mid 80s C10. So we got it, didn't do anything with it for about a year, which is pretty standard operating practice with us. Um, and then I sort of like decided, right, let's, let's get this done, let's get it sorted. So we dropped it off to a guy in the Midlands to do some work on it, to basically transfer over all the air to the full airlift suspension. So that it was running the 3P management and, and it was reliable. And we had a custom made bed while it was up there uh, with airlift and our logo um, cut into it. And then from there, it needed a new engine. So it ended up getting a new small block Chevy put in it. And then it, it was just a never ending cycle, little bits that needed to be done, which is an inherent part of having a truck that is 65, 69 years old or however old it is, and it's not exactly reliable. Basically, it took us about a year to get it back. And when we did get it back, um, we took it out for a drive and the bumper fell off. So that was a great start. One of the fun things was the truck used to let in a hell of a lot of water. Um, I took it to, I think it was Ultimate Stance one year, and I drove it back and my feet were soaking. It was coming in through the floor. It was coming in through the screen. <laughs> Got all of that sorted. Um, by that time, we had the new engine in it and then it was driving okay and it was time to start thinking about what we were going to actually do with it. Um, We've had a truck before, which is my little Datsun 510 with the rotary engine in that's basically been sitting over there for the last five years, never gets used. Um, and we thought, no, this is a cool car, cool truck to take to shows. Um, unfortunately, we just never took it anywhere because it's difficult to drive. Essentially, it's got horrific brakes and no power steering. Oh, and the windows don't come. The windows come down like that far. So it gets really hot in there. Okay, sit around. The uh, power steering pump really is on its last legs. I've got a terrible wheel wobble. Uh, but I'm cool for the first time since I set off. I am cool now. And that back bit just falls off and flaps about. I mean, God forbid, if anyone ever wants to buy this and they see this video, and, you know, we will gradually work our way through these teething issues. So it was onto the wheels, and obviously they're going to be rotiform. Um, and I was chatting with Brian about what we could do, and randomly he had a set of 22-inch centers that were built for a BMW X5. Um, and I was like, yeah, let's just do it. No one's really done anything that modern, sort of stupid, certainly not over here anyway. So yeah, we went for the 22s, uh, DIAs with like a crazy sort of black polished finish. Um, once we've done the wheels, it was onto the interior. Um, and we took it up to the boys at Cobra. Reveal the teal. So with the car essentially being rust colored and then everything else being black, I wanted to brighten up the interior and 
I saw this colour on the inside of a Rolls Royce. It was called Sea Foam, but it's just teal, basically, as far as I'm concerned. It also happens to be my wife's favourite colour. So once again, Carl didn't get any input into this. I just did what I wanted to do. Um, took it up to Cobra, trimmed it all the headlining, recovered the bench seat, re foamed the bench seat because that had seen better days, and then finished it off with a, I think it's a goat's eye held in formaldehyde or whatever it's called on the gear stick, which is just pretty stupid. I like it. Carpets been done through with new strips either side. Oh yeah, that's a hell of a lot better. Yeah. So at least you haven't got a raw raw carpet edge and then everything else to match the teal of the teal of the seats. Yeah, it's a much nicer place to be in than it was before. We were gonna do sort of like when the frame came apart, those bits, the visible bits, we did think, oh, do we just powder coat them? But stupidly, it matched it's, matched the colour of yeah. the car, and it was like it seems a shame to make them nice and new. And no, I like that. I like the fact that it's kind of old and basically. Yeah. And this is all perfect. And in my wife's favourite colour, which is not important at all, really. So when we got this truck, I always had this vision of like. Oh, it's a bench seat, I'll be able to like go out cruising with the family. That's never happened because although the truck's relatively large, it's so small in here. Um, you can just about get two adults in it. It's ridiculous, really. Maybe people were a lot smaller in the 50s. That's because our truck is a 1954 Ford pickup. And believe you me, it handles as easily as a passenger car. Take a look inside. We've got plenty of room, lots of window space, and we've got Ford automatic and power brakes. It's only natural we got these two Ford Extras. They really save us time and money. So once we got the car back from Cobra, um, I needed something to take my mind off of A, how hot it is in here, and B, how noisy it is in here, because it's got a 350 small block Chevy with straight through pipes on it, so it's not exactly quiet. So luckily, Kenwood, being the boys they are, hooked us up and installed this um, touchscreen DMX CarPlay, which makes life considerably more bearable in here. And plus, it's so easy, even I can understand it. He says when stuff's come up that he doesn't know what's going on. Oops, yeah, I don't know what that does. Anyway, it's good. So along with the uh, head unit, Kenwood put some under seat subs in and a couple of speakers in the uh, footwells so it's actually an acceptable place to be um, we got 3p mounted there so that's nice and easy so once we do figure out the teething problems of basically new frames have got to be put in here to allow the windows to go down and i am going to get power steering put on it and i am going to get the brakes fitted this truck will actually get used because basically all that happens at the moment is it gets loaded onto a trailer and taken to shows because none of us want to drive it. Although you enjoyed it, didn't you, Rick? Taking it to Classic, there and back, on like the hottest weekend. Yeah. I remember that. So um, I remember as I drove past you in like a Rolls Royce and you were in this. <laughs> anyway, um, but I love this truck. Um, we thought about selling it. And again, I just thought it's kind of like, You'd sell it, or I'd sell it, and then I'd see all the cool trucks on Instagram again and go, oh, I should never have sold that. So, um, yeah, this will be staying with us, and I have a plan for it that does involve a trailer and does involve the 510 pickup, but we'll see how we get on with it. That's it. So the whole process of getting it to a point where we could take back the vehicle and um, vehicle sound quite professional, that. Right? Bit of hand movement, bit of vehicle. Find the old guys in a minute. Um, we've got under speaker subs, under speaker? I'm just proper rambling now. 
Uh, I've forgotten everything I just said to myself. 